Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you all my favorite backup solution for Mac owners, because as we all know, technology does change quickly, and the best backup solution for you five years ago might not be your best solution today. Ultimately, the perfect backup solution would be one that could withstand any kind of disaster, so that if every electronic in your home were destroyed, you'd still have a way to get back your data. How to back up your Mac, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Back in the day, we used to just tell everyone across the board to use Time Machine. For those of you who don't know, Time Machine is a piece of software that comes pre-installed into every Apple computer. Ultimately, through this class, I am gonna end up teaching you how to use it. Uh, but the big thing that we didn't like about Time Machine was that, first of all, for those of you who backed up to an external hard drive, those hard drives were still susceptible to physical destruction. So, for example, if you had something like a fire or a flood or an earthquake, your backup and your primary computer could easily both be destroyed. And of course, the other big problem with Time Machine is that you have to remember to plug it in. This is something that's usually not quite as big a problem for desktop owners since it tends to live on a desk, but for those of you who are laptop owners, typically it's not the best solution. So my recommendation is that you use iCloud as your primary backup and Time Machine as your secondary backup. In order to show you how to set this up, let's switch over to my Mac. All right, folks, let's start off with going over the settings to make this all happen automatically. Let's start off by going to the Apple menu at the top left corner of your screen, and then from there, we're gonna go into System Preferences. Now, from here, we're gonna go into iCloud Settings. From here, you'll notice that I have a checkbox next to where it says iCloud Drive, and now let's click on Options just to the right of that. There's two key items I want to point out in this list. The first is this top option right here, which by default is probably not checked on your computer, but I'm recommending that you might want to consider it. So what this is going to do is it's going to take any files or folders that are on my desktop or in my documents folder, and it's gonna move them into iCloud. There's still a copy on my computer, so for example, if I do decide to back up my computer additionally with Time Machine, Time Machine will also back up those files too. This is just an easy way to make sure that no matter what computer I'm on, or for that matter, even what mobile device I'm on, I always have the same data on all of them, at least when it comes to those two locations. In fact, some of you may have noticed here in the background, I actually have a folder that is showing from my other computer. I have next to my recording computer here, a laptop signed into the same iCloud account. I just now created a folder and boom, it's now here on my desktop. I did wanna make a quick special note for any of you out there who are video editors that if you do decide to use this feature here, just make sure any projects that you are currently working on are not located on either your desktop or your documents folder. Just because if you're editing a video and that location is stored to a place that's trying to sync through the cloud, it's gonna pretty much paralyze your internet connection. So just consider moving it to maybe the movies folder or really any location other than these two places. The other feature that I wanna point out here is this last option to optimize your Mac's storage. This is a great feature, especially for any of you out there who are running low on hard drive space. If you don't see that feature appear, it's probably because you're running an older operating system, but just know that it will be there in the future when you do eventually upgrade. One of the situations where this will be especially helpful to many of you is when it comes time to purchasing a new Apple computer. If you just simply use this feature on your old computer and store all of your most important data either on the desktop or in the documents folder, it means that when you buy your new computer, all you really need to do is sign into your iCloud account and all of your stuff comes right back down. One of the tricks I wanted to make sure I mentioned in this class was if you ever have questions about, is my data in the cloud or is it not in the cloud? The easiest way to find the answer to that is just to simply open whatever web browser you use and go to iCloud.com. You can sign in with the same information through the web and you should see that everything matches. So for example, if I go here into iCloud Drive, again, through the web, you'll see here that if I go into my desktop folder, 
we have the folder from the other computer, so I know that everything is syncing correctly. Now that we've talked about using iCloud Drive to back up your files, let's talk about using iCloud to back up your photos. As you'll notice here, once again, we have an option button just to the right where it says photos. And from here, my recommendation is that you use this first option. These next two may not be for everyone, but of course there will be exceptions to the rule. The one that we really care about more than anything though is iCloud for your photo library. There's one additional setting that I want to show you, but that setting is actually located inside the Photos app. So for now, let's click Done, and let's go into the Photos app for a moment. From here, let's go to where it says Photos at the very top left, and let's go into Preferences. The second tab that you'll see here is for iCloud. And once again, we have an option right here with one click to optimize your data. One piece of advice I wanted to give you is that if you decide to turn on this option, I would recommend that when you close this little box that you leave the Photos app open in the background for a couple of hours. That just allows the computer to do everything that it's doing in the background, complete, and sync those changes to the cloud. Coming back to the iCloud preference pane, you'll notice that there are other types of items that you can sync through iCloud, like your contacts, your calendars, reminders, etc. In general, I tend to recommend that my clients use all of these options, although there are certainly exceptions to the rule. In fact, the only one that I really recommend that you not use is Keychain. Now, different people have different feelings on this topic, but for me, it comes down to this. Keychain is one of the only apps that has literally never been updated by Apple. It is incredibly hard to navigate, and if you are trying to find your usernames and passwords to various websites that you use, I would recommend that you use a different option. In fact, I actually just taught an entire class all about it. It's called LastPass. It's an app that you can put on your iPhone, on your computer, really any devices. And if you want, you can even print out your passwords if you feel like it. Let's now take a minute to talk again about Time Machine. Now, I think it's pretty important for everyone out there to use Time Machine to back up their computer. And while a lot of you out there probably have hard drives similar to this, I want to throw an alternative idea your way. And I admit this is not a solution for everyone, especially anyone out there with big data needs. But you might want to consider checking one of these out. And if you do decide you want to pick one up, the links are in the description of the video. So these are both examples of flash drives, one made by Samsung, the other made by SanDisk. And what I like about using a flash drive as a backup solution is that if you think about it, if you had to evacuate your home, this is easy enough to throw in your pocket. And if your pocket gets wet, don't worry about it, they're waterproof. In fact, I've shared this story before, but I once had a flash drive that I accidentally dropped in a puddle. That puddle then froze, and then two weeks later, I got it back, got all my data, no problem at all. These things are practically indestructible. I think I paid about 60 or so dollars for each of these, and these are the higher capacity ones. So whether you decide to back up Time Machine to a flash drive or, reaches off camera, an external hard drive, I'm gonna show you at this point how to set that up so that it works with your computer. Let's once again go back to my Mac. One important disclaimer before proceeding, in the process of formatting your external hard drive or flash drive, this is going to wipe out any data that is already on that device. As you can see here, I have plugged my Seagate external drive into my computer. Now from here, I'm going to click into Spotlight here at the top right corner of my screen and just type in the word disk, D-I-S-K. From here, double click on Disk Utility. From here, click on the external hard drive that you've plugged in, and then go to the erase button that you see here at the top center of the window. Before we go renaming the external hard drive, the first thing I wanna talk a little bit about is format. Now, the one that you really need to use for Time Machine is this one right here, Mac OS Extended Journaled. From here, you can rename your external hard drive, whatever you want, and then click Erase. This process usually only takes a few seconds. If it does fail, and I have seen this happen before, for whatever reason, usually if I run it twice, it tends to go through the second time. 
Now, as you will see here, as soon as it finished formatting the drive, it immediately saw that there was no backup hard drive associated with this computer. And so now it is saying with one click, I can use this as my backup disk. If for whatever reason you do not see this, you can find the same option through system preferences. So let me show you that real quickly. Just go up here to the Apple icon at the top left, system preferences, and then down here towards the bottom right are your time machine options. So from here, you would click where it says select backup disk and point it towards your backup hard drive. Now, for those of you out there who find that Time Machine tends to slow you down a little bit, there is a simple free application that you can download called Time Machine Editor, and I'll give you a link to it in the description of this video. Like I said, it's totally free, but for those of you who don't want your computer to back up every hour, maybe you just want it to back up once or twice a day, it might be a really great option just as far as freeing up resources and making that not happen quite so often. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Keep in mind, if you would ever like to take a private lesson with yours truly, it's something I really do enjoy doing. It's a great chance for me to get to meet and connect with all of you and help you with whatever issues you might be having. You can find out all of the information on my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. That's all for me, everyone. Thanks for watching so much. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.